Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting Hideaway and Barn. The photograph on the right was the inspiration for this painting. It's a continuation of this subject from a previous video of just the uh, white building itself. In this one I've uh, added a composition that includes this barn. I've done a sketch of the major shapes in my composition using a B pencil on an 8 by 10 inch sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. So this is a fairly small painting. 8 by 10 inches is about as small as I work. Before I continue, you might notice that the building shapes have a slightly different color than the rest of the paper. What I've done in advance is I've masked off a few of the shapes that I want to preserve the white of the paper and clean edges. Here you'll notice the shape of this building has tape on it and that's going to act as a frisket and I'll be able to put my wash down and maintain clean edges. The same is true of this pole, this building shape, and this other pole. I've also used the liquid masking flue with a fine line pen and masked off these three wires that come into the composition. When I paint my sky, you'll see that it would be difficult to maintain clean edges using the technique that I'm going to use without the, the masking of the building shapes. Before I continue, I'm going to run down the list of colors that I use for this painting. There's quite a few since I was uh, focusing on uh, local color. So I use cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, royal blue, sap green, permanent green light, cad yellow light, quinacridin gold, raw sienna, raw umber, quinacridin rose matter, and pyrrole red. I'm going to paint the sky using cerulean blue. And while my photograph is just pretty much a, a flat overall uh, blue tone, I'm going to uh, give the suggestion of some kind of puffy clouds in my painting. So I'm liberally applying the cerulean blue with a soft wash brush. I'm working wet on dry at the moment. So they're fairly hard edges. And if I were to let those set very long, that's what I'd be left with. However, I'm going to come in and I'm going to use a fine mist spray bottle and I'm going to soften up these edges and give the suggestion of uh, puffy clouds in this blue sky. So by using my fine mist spray you can see that I've started to soften these edges. Had I waited much longer those edges would have started to set and would have created some hard edges which I don't want. But you can see how it gives a suggestion of clouds and using this technique without the masking uh, it would be running down into those building shapes into the, and, and into the poles. This allows me to have this big fluid wash that I can apply very quickly and get the, the effect that I want. I've thoroughly dried my paper and now I'm going to paint some of the distant tree line. I'm using a mixture of sap green, pyrrole red, some raw umber, and I'll be using a little bit of royal blue in some of the mixtures also. So I'm using this quill brush I like to use and I'm just giving a suggestion of this mass of trees and uh, leaving a few spaces in there for the the sky to show through. And once again I'm not so worried about the edge of the building because that that tape is going to give me a nice clean edge there and as I work this wash um, across the, where the pole is, I'll just paint uh, on either side of it, but I'll have a nice clean edge for that pole because of the, the masking there. And I've added a little bit of raw umber and a little bit of royal blue to darken my mixture. So just a little bit, a little bit darker than what I had here, but um, overall it's a very dark to dark middle value to, to dark value in some areas. And I'm going to carry uh, that uh, dark valued wash all the way to the edge of the other building. And you can see how I can paint this, uh, this large shape here without too much worry about the edges because the masking is going to protect that. And if you look at this, I'm, I'm painting pretty much large shapes. I painted the big sky shape 
Now I'm painting this tree line shape over top of that. And I'm not painting it as a bunch of individual trees. I'm painting it more as one large connected shape. The angle of that right there doesn't line up with the other side, so I'm going to correct that by changing that slope a little bit. I like to have a little texture in my paintings when I can, and uh, I'm just going to spritz some clear water on this with a, a coarse spray. I'm going to take a tissue and just rub it and lift off just to give me a little bit of texture in the trees. I'm going to spritz it one more time. Just go a little bit more, uh, lift it off, and just rub it with a tissue, and I have a little bit of texture. Now I'm going to take the, the same quill brush, and I'm using the same mixtures I was using in the, the uh, tree line there. That I'm actually using the, the darkest mixture that I had. And I'm going to paint the, the edge of this uh, tree, it's a deciduous tree that's coming into the composition here from the top right. So sometimes I'll use the tip of my brush and sometimes I'll, I'll drag the side to, to create some texture and, and make it feel a little bit more organic, a little more random and not as mechanical when, I, when you force the shapes with the, the tip of your brush. So I'll use a combination of brush marks that I make with the tip of my brush and marks that I make by dragging the side of the brush. Now while those areas are still masked, I'm going to take a one inch flat brush and I'm going to take a mixture that has some quinacridone gold and I'm going to paint the, the grassy areas in my composition and I'm using the quinacridone gold, I'm using some raw sienna. I'll also be using some cadmium yellow light along with some permanent green light and also some sap green. So just big brush strokes and once again I'm treating this as a large shape. You can see now I've, I've addressed, the, uh, this is probably the fourth large shape that I've painted. I had the sky shape the tree line, the, the individual tree that's coming in from the side and the top. And now I'm painting this large area of, uh, of uh, the ground that's kind of in the foreground and goes back to the middle ground. And I've been very, uh, I, I put this very large wash down in a very loose manner. And I, I started wet on dry. And then once I've applied it, Anything that I'm going to be doing from here on out is going to be working wet in wet. Whether it's adding paint or scraping or whatever I'm doing, I'm working with a saturated paper. So what I want to do right now while it's still wet is I'm going to lift off my frisket. I'm going to take it off these buildings. And what I want to do is I want to take a scraper. I don't want that hard edge where the, the building and the, the grassy areas meet. I want to have a little texture, a little pattern there. So I'm going to take my scraper and I'm going to drag that up a little bit while it's still wet to give me uh, the suggestion of some grassy shapes there on the edge of both buildings. The other thing I'm going to do is take my scraper and these other areas and just, it's still very saturated so I'm not going to get full movement of the pigment but I'm just trying to create some some variation in the, the the wash that I put down and and just make it a bit more interesting by taking my scraper and, and pushing some paint around and creating just some irregularities in my wash Sometimes I'll move the scraper in a direction where it clears more of a shape and other times I'll move in a direction where it makes more of a line. And I want to suggest some, some grassy edges here even in the middle of this big wash. I'm going to remove the rest of the uh, tape that I've used for a frisket and then I'm going to rub off the liquid uh, masking fluid for the wires also. 
Now I'm going to begin to work on the uh, structure here that's on the right side further back. And I'm going to paint the shadowed side first. And I'll be using a combination of some raw sienna, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, and uh, have just a touch of rose matter in it too. And uh, using a half inch flat brush, but painting the shadowed side here. So my brush is, is loaded up. I'm putting down a, uh, a nice wash here, getting nice coverage with my brush stroke. And now I'm bringing in some water. I'm just going to let that uh, gradate down to the bottom there. So I'm going to bring that wash across using the same mixture there to start right underneath the eave of that roof. And I'm going to come in with a bit of brighter uh, blue tone here. Uh, this mixture has more cerulean in it. So it just uh, gives a, a different tone on the, the sunlit side of this building, but it's in the area where the shadow is cast. So when I painted that, I wasn't thinking about individual things like windows and individual boards or the edge of uh, a side of the building. I was thinking more how the shadow area ties together as one big shape, and that's how I painted it. And here I'm going to scrape up, scrape down a little bit some of that dark tone to help strengthen the feeling of that grassy edge. Now I'm going to take a uh, uh, number four round brush with a fine tip on it. This is a synthetic sable from uh, Princeton Brush Company. And I've got this mixture that I use for the shadow here but I, uh, it's just barely damp with the, with the paint. And I'm just giving an indication of some of the boards here. I'm not painting lines from edge to edge, but just give it an indication of where some of the, the edges of these boards are. And I'm using line to describe them. Taking a light gray mixture and uh, painting the transformer up on this power pole. It's a warm tone. And uh, here I'm taking a uh, little, little cooler gray and just touching along that line that was masked with a light gray tone here to strengthen the indication of the, the power wires that are stringing down into the composition. I'm going to paint this, this pole that's sitting here beside the building. Just using a mixture with some raw umber, some raw sienna, and just kind of a, a bit of a warm brown. And I'm taking a few touches of some darker value mixture here, a little cooler too. It's raw umber with some royal blue in it. And just touch it into that, that warmer mixture that is still wet. So I'm painting wet and wet as I apply that dark tone. And I'm going to take that dark tone and bring it down the left edge of the pole, leaving a little bit of a highlight on the right side where the light source would be hitting it. Using the same dark value, I'm just giving an indication of a window in the end of this building. And, um, if you look close, you can see I've made that up of four shapes to indicate the panes in the window with the divider in between. And I'm just giving the indication of the edge of this, this building. I'm going to carry some of that dark tone down uh, along the bottom edge where you can kind of see a shadowed area where a board would be, where the boards would end and perhaps it's stone down there, but um, you can kind of see that dark shadow there. And then same on the other side, I'm gonna, this is actually the, the cast shadow from the building. So I'm taking a little bit of this kind of dark neutral mixture and bringing it out just to give the indication of a, a shadow. Here I'm using a little bit more line to describe a few edges. 
just just slight touches of of a middle value to help describe the edge and the shadow on the edge and then there's a gutter that runs down the side of this structure Here I'm going to put a light wash on the top of the, the building on the roof. So I'm using a mixture with some cerulean blue, some rose matter quinacridone, and some raw sienna in it to, to neutralize it. So that cerulean and rose matter make a purple tone and I add a little bit of raw sienna to neutralize that a little bit. And uh, taking some clear water to thin that down a little and now I'm added a cooler mixture with a little more blue into it and I'm just going to take clear water and just gradate that down to the edge and then I'm just pretty much going to leave it I'm going to take a uh, half inch flat brush and I'm going to paint the side of this building and I'm going to paint the whole side except for the windows and uh, I'm using a mixture of quinacridone and rose matter with some raw sienna in it, so it makes a bit of a, a rich red in that. That raw sienna takes some of the coolness out of the rose matter. I'm just bringing that down with a half inch brush, trying to keep a, a pretty clean edge on the edge of the building there where there's a, there's a white board that comes down that corner. Just working around the windows so this is one continuous wash that I'm bringing down with a bead of water just leading it down the page and remember I always work at a 15 to 20 degree angle so gravity is helping me bring that wash down and gradate it down the the page I'm working wet on dry and you can see I turn my brush to get the kind of stroke that I want. Um, I don't just use the end and paint it like I'm painting a wall. I, I turn it, I use the corner, I use the edge, I'll use the flat side. Um, so that's one continuous wash and I wasn't worried about the details of boards or shadow or anything. I just wanted to cover that whole side with that. Now that I've applied that wash, it's saturated there and I'm gonna take my scraper and I'm gonna move some paint around to give the indication of boards. Now a lot of times when I scrape I wait till it's in a damp condition has a sheen on the paper because I'm normally when I, in working that way I'm trying to push the paint and and leave uh, scrapes or grassy shapes or something. But in this instance I'm working with it saturated because I'm moving large amounts of paint and it's not going to flow back in like a fine line but it's just going to give me just a, a variation of value there uh, that's going to help me indicate that there's uh, a board, there's a vertical shape, uh, multiple vertical shapes that make up that, the structure of this wall. Now I'm going to paint the uh, shadowed area of this building and I'm using the same mixture but I've added uh, some royal blue to it to deepen the tone and the value. And this pretty much reads as a big shape on the side of this building. However, towards the bottom, because the way this is structured, these vertical uh, boards or panels that make up the wall have areas where they're joined that um, that, that there's some raised areas and there's other areas that are recessed so at the bottom of this shadow I need to give some indication of those irregularity of the surface of those vertical boards so here it's a straight line but then I'm going to come uh, across in those kind of pockets and give the indication that's a little deeper the shadow goes a little deeper there because of the irregularity in the surface it's almost like a a big corrugation of the wall. Now I'm going to take some of that that mixture that I just used in the shadow and I'm going to use a smaller brush here. I'm going to 
use line here to describe some of the edges and some of the dark areas and help reinforce the feeling of these boards here. And those marks I think are a little too dark for where they're at. I'm going to take a little paint off my brush. I'm going to blot that. But I'm going to come back with a brush that's pretty much a damp brush right now. So it's not going to give a total coverage with the brush stroke. And it's going to be a broken line a little bit as I go along the page. And also as I lift it to, so that it's not just straight lines. But it helps reinforce the feeling of these uh, vertical, the vertical elements to the side of the building. I want to strengthen the variation in the, the, the red tone that I have here on the side um, because there's some a weathered feel to it and some richer color in it. So I've taken this um, rose matter, the quinacridone rose matter, and I've added some, some more raw sienna and I've added just a touch of uh, uh, a royal blue and it just to, to darken a little bit from what the mixture I had and um, so it carries that that tone and value a little bit down into the boards and just gives another element to that to that wall so now I'm going to paint the windows so to do that, I'm using the dark mixture here that has some royal blue in it, a little bit of raw sienna, um, raw umber, and uh, I'm, I'm painting these as uh, the panes of glass. So I'm trying to leave space in between the shapes that I'm making. And I'm not just making little squares, I'm breaking them up the shapes up a little bit. So here again same approach just painting some smaller square shapes with space in between them to indicate the panes and I need to bring this one down a little bit more it's about a, it almost divided it in half and then I'm going to paint the same on the bottom leaving a space and I'm breaking these up a little bit more just to indicate that there's some reflection going on in the window and the glass And once I get this window, I'm going to clean up those edges a little. I'm going to, using the same uh, mixture, I'm going to paint the, the shadow that's being created by the edges of the, this window and the boards that make the window up. So it's the same mixture that I was using in the shadow up above. And given that suggestion of a shadow, I'm going to do the same up above. It's not quite as pronounced because it's a smaller window. It's not as it doesn't have as big of boards. There is a horizontal element to this this wall where some of these boards where they have a break and they uh, it's like a seam there. So I'm giving the indication of that there now with this darker mixture. I'm going to take a little bit of water and soften the the bottom edge of this linear shape, linear mark that I made. Now I'm going to put a light wash. This is a, a light middle value gray that's um, similar to what I put on the roof of the other building, but it's a, it's a middle value, kind of a, a red purple uh, gray tone just to uh, cover, cover the shadowed side of the edge of that roof line. And now I've added a little bit more blue to it and I've got more towards a, a blue violet but it's still fairly neutral so it's kind of a cool gray to put on the top of that roof there. And some clear water. And that's, a, that's enough. I think I'm just going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a darker tone and that's probably a little too dark. I'm going to take some of the paint off my brush and I'm going to blot that to soften that a little bit. But now I'm going to take my, my brush that doesn't have as dark a value or as much paint on it 
and just give a slight indication of these um, linear boards or could be, I guess, aluminum uh, sheets to make up the rooftop here. So this is the, the seam in between those. And uh, the angle of these shifts a little bit as you move in pers with perspective of these. I'm going to put a mat on this to get a good look at it. And that's my painting Hideaway with a Barn. This isn't by any means a series, but it's just another example of the same subject taking a different viewpoint. You can find the reference for this video by going to the YouTube reference link at the top of my online learning center page. And if you have questions about material, you can always go to the studio page of my website, rsirwitzart.com. And if you have questions, you can email me at contactrsirwitzart at gmail.com. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.